Hey everybody, this is my 40 gallon waterfall tank and I'm about to do a little bit of basic maintenance on it. I'm just going to do a water change. We're going to vac out some of the mulm and crud that builds up on the bottom. This tank doesn't have a lot of circulation in it in the sense of vigorous water flow. Therefore, all of the mulm and stuff settles to the bottom. I do have a lot of overturn, water being pumped out of the bottom, run through you know the whole waterfall system, and then back down into the water. So as far as gas exchange, uh, I've got gobs and gobs of gas exchange. I just don't have a lot of flow through the tank, and as a result, I get a lot of mulm and crud and stuff building up on the bottom of the tank. And I've been thinking about it a lot lately. I've been doing some kind of experiments with my canister filters to find out if all of the mulm that builds up in the canister filter and all of the dirty filter will amount to having higher nitrates in your tank or having the nitrates you know, uh, build up or accumulate faster than if you don't have a lot of mulm in the tank. And so far, what it seems to me is that once that stuff has broken down and once it becomes that sort of mulmy stuff that we're going to be looking at in a few minutes when we do the water change, I'm going to show you how much of it I'm actually vacuuming out of here. That doesn't really seem to contribute much more to the nitrate production, once it's broken down, it's broken down and it does not continue to dump nitrate into the tank or dump ammonia into the tank, I should say. And then of course that eventually ultimately through our nitrogen cycle gets converted into the nitrogen or uh, nitrate rather. So I did get in here not long ago and I vacked out a whole lot of the stuff because it was just getting so bad and I was already doing some work on it anyway. I wanted to shoot the video, I just didn't have time. So I did clean a lot of it out already. So what we're going to see today when I get in there and we start vacking the stuff out of there is actually fairly minimal compared to what was in there about a week ago. In fact, you can see it's still after I did the water change as it settled back down, you can see how much of it is settled on top of the uh, Java Windelov in there. It looks like it had a snowstorm on it, except that's all just mulm settling back down after my last water change. So we're going to get in there and do all that. But what I really wanted to talk about with this tank, now that I've been standing here thinking about it, is what defines a dirty fish tank? Because you could see that water, you could see all that mulm and stuff in there, you could see how the glass wasn't clean on the tank necessarily. And if we look up here, we can see all sorts of algae and cyanobacteria growing everywhere. And I often have people sort of conflate algae with dirty. You know, if you've got algae in your tank, they see that as a dirty tank. Or if you've got algae on your glass especially, and I understand that it may be visually, you know, blocking your view, but it doesn't necessarily mean the tank is dirty because there's algae growing on the glass. So in this tank, one of the things I wanted to point out, as grungy as that looks, that is the nitrate in this tank. I won't call that none. I mean, we did get some color change, but that's less than five parts per million. Now, obviously in this tank, I've got lots of greenery going and that does help to absorb some of the nitrate. And this tank is very, you know, lightly stocked for a 40 gallon tank. But again, how do we define what a dirty tank is? Does nitrate make a tank dirty? Because if that's the case, then this tank is crystal clean. Or does mulm and crud make the tank dirty? Again, it might look nasty, but it's not affecting the fish or changing my water chemistry in any way. It's not contributing to high nitrate in this tank. My plants are growing well. You know, does having cyanobacteria grow in the tank mean it's dirty? I certainly don't think so. You go out into pristine nature and you see cyanobacteria growing everywhere. That's why I have it uh, in my tanks. I do actually want to shoot a video about cyanobacteria and why uh, I think I have so much of it in my tanks. I get a lot of people asking me questions about that and why I can never seem to get rid of it and what do I do wrong and you know why don't I try doing this and why don't I try doing that. So I will actually be sitting down one of these days when I'm in the mood to do it um, and talking about the, the cyanobacteria I have in my tanks because I got a lot of it. I know I do. I talk about the ChemiClean all the time and I'm always talking about um, cyanobacteria being in the tanks and this is one of them and we're looking at the cyanobacteria right now. All that dark green stuff you can see, that's all cyanobacteria growing in there. But to me, that looks perfectly natural and normal and it's clearly not impacting uh, the, the water quality in my tank, like this stuff here, you know, what is that? 
it looks like something that if I touched it, it would leap onto my arm and slowly consume the rest of my body. But that's perfectly normal, natural growth that you would see growing on a log if you went out to the stream. So I'm not here to give you any definitive answers of how you define what a dirty tank is, but clearly there's a lot of different um, you know, metrics you could use to decide what is dirty. And this tank, I guess some people might say this tank is dirty, but when I consider that, you know, compared to most of my other tanks, I don't consider this to be a dirty tank at all. It's got a lot of mulm and crud in there, but, you know, at worst, that might be contributing some bacterial load or something to the tank. I don't know. I've never really had much of an issue uh, with fish dying or anything. This is actually one of my most stable tanks. So let me get the tripod set up. If you're still interested in seeing how much of that stuff we vac out of there, we'll do a little bit of a before and after. Uh, just because we videoed this much of it, we may as well see what it looks like once I'm all done my little bit of maintenance. So we'll go ahead and call that your before. I know you can't actually see what I'm backing out of the back here. I'm hoping you can see how black the crud moving up through this hose is. Uh, the back corner of the tank where the water pump sits is where all the water gently flows to, but there's all kind of nooks and crannies back there and it all just settles in in this back corner. So this is always a problem area to try to get to.
Now, unfortunately, when I'm sucking up this much crud out of the tank, the hose a lot of time will get a little clogged at the other end. It starts backing up and I lose suction. I also have to be careful that the drain in my shower does not get clogged up with this because my shower stall is only a couple inches deep and it'll overflow. So I'll be right back. May as well see what it looks like once I'm all done my little bit of maintenance. So we'll go ahead and call that your before. And there's your after. So not a whole lot different looking. Doing the water change definitely reduces the amount of tannin in the water. So you can see through it a little more clearly. And then of course if you really get in there and start eyeballing the bottom where you can see the gravel a little more clearly. You can kind of see in the back around where I've got that pump. It's a shame that pump's such a gaudy, ugly color green like that. Uh, one of these days I'm gonna get in there and lean a rock up against it or something so you can't see it. But normally when I come in, I'm standing in the room more at this angle and it's not so noticeable. 
So that's about it. I can't really think of much else to talk about. Uh, as you saw, we wiped down the glass inside and out. I used my little melamine sponges to do that. Uh, on the inside anyway, I just used a standard paper towel and Windex on the outside. I'll put a link down below to those melamine sponges. They are the same thing as what are sold under the brand name of Magic Erasers. And they are actually a melamine sponge and they're really, really good uh, at getting the glass clean and wiping all that crud and stuff off of there. Uh, I buy a large 48 pack of them and I slice them into smaller pieces uh, and it lasts me quite a long time. I also sprayed, as you probably saw, a little bit of hydrogen peroxide around on the cyanobacteria that's growing right here on the wood. Didn't kill it off completely, but it beats it back a little bit. Every time I do a water change, I spray it there a little bit and it keeps it from growing too much as far as the rest of it goes. Again, not too worried about it. So there you go, everybody. Just a look at the waterfall tank after we got it all cleaned up. The bulk of the video, what I wanted to talk about, the cleanliness and what makes the tank dirty or not. And so there you go. There's your before and after. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you are subscribed. You never know what you're going to get with me. Don't forget this one here is my waterfall tank. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you real soon in the next one.